Welcome to this tutorial to show you how to use Rampant Design's travel style mats inside of Blackmagic Design Fusion. Now there's a reason why you might want to use this inside of Fusion rather than DaVinci Resolve. If you do it inside of DaVinci Resolve it's very hard to actually change the speed of a clip. So once you've applied it as a mat, to go in and actually change it to a different length in time is quite difficult. So what you might want to do is open up DaVinci Resolve and send something to Fusion, build it all in Fusion, and then with Fusion Connect it shows up inside of DaVinci Resolve. And after I've done this tutorial, I'll quickly show you how to change the speed of your mats and also how to do Fusion Connect from Resolve to Fusion. So let's build the timeline up. First thing you need is a loader. So you can either go to a loader button up here or you can do Control Spacebar, Command Spacebar to bring up the tool shortcut. So I'm going to select this and do Control Spacebar, start typing loader, hello is all I need, enter, and that's a loader. It says, right, which bit of footage do you want? And I'm going to start off with, uh, let's start off with a river. Okay. So there's the river and I'm going to click open. Now the first thing I'm also going to need to do after I've got the, the item in is I'm going to need to be able to move it around afterwards. So I'm going to add in a transform. Now a transform, there is a transform tool as up here or you can held in the control space bar or command space bar and start typing transform. Okay, and then in it comes, there's a transform to actually control it. And if you want to see what's going on, you can actually click these buttons or you can hit one on your keyboard which will send that to there. You always need to click the fit button as well by the way. Or I can see that's the transform afterwards. So any change that I make to transform will be shown. Now I also need to bring in the style mat. And the easiest thing to do actually is just to copy and paste this. So select both of those in Command or Control C, and then click where you want them to go. So I'm just going to click up here in Command or Control V. And this time, this loader I am going to change. So I'm going to go to Browse. So select the loader itself and go to Browse. And I'm going to go to the Rampant Design travel style mats there they are and I'm going to use number 15 so pull down 15 part 1 there you go 15 part 1 open and do I want to make a change yes I do so there you go so if I want to see what that one looks like I can put it in two and again I need to click fit and you won't see anything until you pull the playhead along a bit now the difference is on this side if I click and hold the middle mouse wheel you'll see that this is a 4k item whereas the actual footage I'm using is HD. Okay, so I want to be able to move this mat into the realm of being the same size as HD, and that's why I've added this transform. So I'm going to select the transform, just the transform tool, and when you go to the transform tool, you've got size, and if you take size to 50%, that actually makes it perfectly fit HD. So just type 0.5, enter, and now this will fit perfectly onto this screen. Bear in mind, this is the mat, so that's 50%. This is HD size of a 4K screen, whereas this is the HD screen. So now I need to be able to bring this as a mat to mat over this. But there's a problem. I need to be able to independently move this item from the mat. If I just drag this down to the mask input here, it will work as long as I don't need to move the image. Let me demonstrate it. So take the output from the mat, take it to the mask input of this transform. Okay, now you see nothing initially, but what you need to do is go to the transform tool and you need to go to this little icon over here and multiply by mask. And when you click that, you'll see that it works. Okay, everything's great. You think that's brilliant, but oh look, I need to re adjust the footage because I'm not seeing the right bit but if I was to make any changes so if I just for argument's sake I go to the controls of this transform and I just change the size you see the whole thing changes which is not what we want to do so I'm just going to click this little dot to return that what you need to do is simply add another transform before this transform so select this node command or control spacebar and the last thing I did was a transform so it's still there just click OK now this transform is unaffecting the by the mat over here so this is not affecting it so if I select this one here and I was to move the center now just to show you there's a little cool tip you can't click and drag in here unless you right click center modify with XY XY path and then you've got a modifier click on the modifier open up the modifier and you'll actually see that you can actually XY now I don't want to do X but I do want to do Y so I can see the river in view. 
Okay, so it's not affected the mat because it's separate. Everything in this transform is affecting the mat, but this transform is just affecting the footage. Now, to do the three parts of the mat, all you do is select this lot, copy, command C, and click somewhere else. I'm going to click, say, here, command V, paste. Move those into place and change the mat. So click away and then click this mat. Make sure you look at tool, not modifier, and then go and find part two. So click in there and go and find 15 part two. There you go. Open. And then select the footage and go and modify the footage. So I'm going to browse and find another piece of footage. So I'm going to choose this one here. These are from video blocks. Okay. So yes, I want to make a change. And if I want to see what that looks like, I'm going to stick this in viewer 2. That's what it looks like. Again, if I want to move the view, choose this transform. It's already got the modifier attached because I did the copy and paste. So I can actually move that down to get the right view. And then again, I can copy and paste. In fact, all I need to do now is just click and paste because I've already got everything set up. And on this one, again, I'm going to select this one and I'm going to go to Tool. I'm going to go and choose part 3, so go down to 15, part 3, okay, and then I'm going to go down to my footage here, and I'm going to find a different piece of footage, and I'm going to choose, nope, yeah, that one will do, and click OK, and yes, I want to change them, so now when I look at this one, I'm just going to click here, it, it appears as if nothing's there, but actually what's happened is the transform's off. So if I just go to this transform and go back to this modifier and I reset it, you'll see it's there. And in actual fact, I want to pull it down this time so I can get a good view of the people in the boat. Choose which bit I want, but that'll do. Just say, say that for argument's sake. Ah, there, see the water. There you go. So now I've got my three parts, one, two, three. Now all I need to do is join them all together. And that requires a merge node. So with nothing selected, I'm going to click Merge, which is up here, or you can do Control Spacebar again and start typing Merge. Then I'm going to take the output of one to one to one merge, and I'm going to merge it with the output of the second one. And then when I look at that merge node in say two, those two are working together. So I'm just going to tidy this up a tad. Okay, and then I need to merge again, so I'm going to create another merge node. Here's my merge node, and I'm going to take the output of this merge node into this merge node, take the output of this one to here, and then look at that, and that's all three of them together. Now the final thing you might want to do is actually create a background, because as you can see, this is against a transparency grid. You can sort of turn that on and off here, but it is actually transparent. If you want to send it across with black at the back or a different color at the back, all you need to do is create a background. So I'm going to do Control Spacebar, or actually you can click the background button here if you like, and you'll see that I've got another merge node here and a background that's been attached. Now, if I look at that one, I can't see because the background is on top. So you simply select the merge node and either right click, and then you can actually turn the uh, control changes, swap inputs here, or notice the keyboard shortcuts, Control or Command T, and then the black background is there. And then you've created your rampant design travel style map with three separate pieces of footage, all moving as they're supposed to move. Now, problem is, of course, um, my composition isn't long enough, or maybe I want to change the length of my composition. So if you want to change the length of your composition, you can actually decide that you know you want it to be, say I want it to be 250 frames long, which is the default I've got here. But I actually want to change the length of these style mats so that they finish at 250 frames. So if I select the tool here, and I was to do spacebar, so control spacebar, and start typing time, you see I've got time speed. And if I click time speed and click OK, that adds a time speed node in here. Now, the simplest way to see this is if you select the time speed node and you go to the timeline over here, you'll see that the time speed one is selected. Make sure you can see the tools. And then when I start taking the speed down, you'll see that it starts to move the actual layer in. So say I want to finish at, 
Well, actually, I want to finish at 250 frames, don't I? So if I go to 250 frames, just pull this across to 250 frames. That's where I want it to finish, so just make sure it goes to 250. Now, the style mat has not actually finished at that point. So there you go, that's actually got it at 1.4. So 1.14, that's actually pulled it along so it's finished. So now I'm going to do the same to the other two. So I'm going to go to the flow and I'm going to select this tool, Command C and V. And this one again, Command V, so copy, copy. So now at 250 frames, whole thing actually pulls through so it starts to go off so that it finishes at 250 frames because I played with that tool okay so that's actually built a 250 frame version okay of the actual tool that we're looking at so it's it's a very simple workflow now the final thing I want to show you is what if you want to move between resolve and fusion now I've actually built all this in fusion I'm actually going to open up Resolve. I'm going to save Fusion while I'm at it. So file, save. And I'll just stick it on my desktop under my Fusion example. Okay, so that's there. And I'm going to go back to DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to open up a new one. So here's DaVinci Resolve and you create a timeline. So you do all the usual things that you would do. But this time actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a solid color. I'm going to drag it down to the timeline. Now, how did I do that? I'm in the edit page, and I made sure I went to effects library, and I went down to generator, and I took a solid color, and I dragged it down into the timeline. And by default, it's black, but if you're worried it's a different color, click the inspector button, and then make sure the color's black. Okay, so this is just a solid color that I have created. So I've just dragged something in. Now, I can't do anything at the moment with that, but I can make it as long or as short as you want. Okay, so let's say that we just want this again five seconds. So what I'm going to do now is right click on it twice. So the first right click creates a new compound clip, which is what you have to have to send across to Fusion. So I click that and I'm just going to call it Compound Style. Okay, and then again, right click again. This time you go to New Fusion Connect Clip. And when you do that, you need to make sure a few things uh, are titled correctly. So I'm going to call this um, Rampant travel mats okay make sure your formats are correct give it a, a, a location I've actually got a location for it here let me just create a new folder inside of that one in case of problems because I obviously did an example earlier so I'm going to put v2 version 2 make sure I select that one okay and then make sure you click this one open the fusion connect clip and then you click create so it then renders the whole thing out so give it a minute to render out and then it's going to open up Fusion. Up comes Fusion with a new composition note. Now, the way you think about this is this is the input. So this is the, the, the black solid that we created. And this is the output. So this is the bit that goes back to DaVinci Resolve. Now, all I need to do is go back to my composite, which I've actually already created. I'm actually going to select all of that. I'm going to do Command C and I'm going to go here. I'm going to click just here, Command V, and there is the whole thing. Okay, so I need to add this into my flow. So how do I add it into my flow? Well, the first thing is I've got a black here, so I don't actually need the black. So what I can do is I can get rid of this black, and instead connect it to here, and then connect this to here okay so this is going to be the final version so we pull it through okay the whole thing's working as we expected right so that's actually done it that's it all I needed to do if you want it to render in the background by the way you select this actual icon here and you go to where it says save frames high quality interactive click HQ so that actually is actually rendering you can see these green things going off but also you go file and you make sure that background render is clicked and then you can see that a background render is going on and that is rendering through my timeline and that will once it's finished actually show up as rendered inside of DaVinci Resolve 
So I'm going to go back to DaVinci Resolve as soon as this is finished. And when it's finished, I'll show you the end result. Okay, so that's finished. So now I'm going to go back over to DaVinci Resolve. Here's DaVinci Resolve. Pull through. There's the whole thing. Rendered and ready to go. Now, if I suddenly turn around and say, oh dear, I've got the time wrong. Well, of course, I can always go back to Fusion. So this is actually, you can see this is going to five seconds. Okay, so if I go back to Fusion and say, oh, right, I need the whole thing to have finished in five seconds. So five seconds is 125 frames. I'm on a UK system. So 124, yeah, that's 125 frames. So at this point, it should have all have gone out. So if it's not all gone out, again, I can go to my timeline and I can start going through those various tools. So let's actually make sure, let's click on the first one. So click on the first one and pull it until the item disappears out. So 2.32 is what I need. So if I go to this one, and I also ch change that to 2.32. And I go to this one, and I change that one to 2.32. Let the whole thing render through one more time. I won't I won't keep it rendering. I'll show you when it's done and then you go back to resolve. Okay, so that's finished. Back to resolve. And play it through. Now if it doesn't update immediately, what you can do is you can always right click on this and you can actually go to Fusion Connect Clip, okay? And you've actually got the ability to refresh. Okay, and then if I actually play that through. In it comes, and out it goes, at a different time than the original. Well, that's how you can use Resolve and Fusion together to create all sorts of different things at different speeds. I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you very much for watching.